robot arm officer here in the Mission Control Center called the uh, Payload Deployment and Retrieval Systems Officer, or PDRS, reports that uh, the Wake Shield has now broken its seal uh, with its carrier platform and is in the process of slowly being raised above uh, the payload bay into the low harbor position. This is the first uh, major step on the road to the deployment of the Wake Shield, which is uh, scheduled at around 4.38 a.m. Central Time this morning, if all goes well. Astronauts Jim Newman and Jim Voss raising the Wake Shield facility out of its carrier platform in this view uh, from uh, payload bay cameras uh, in the shuttle. The Wake Shield is uh, being carefully lifted uh, directly uh, vertical behind the Spartan Science satellite. Now this view from a camera at the rear of the payload bay clearly showing the Wake Shield facility being lifted out of its cargo bay. The orbiter is uh, currently tracking over the Pacific Ocean on uh, the, at Devin, the wake shield is clear and we've sent the SC2 repower command. Copy and Devin. Again, the two-ton wake shield facility now being uh, lifted to a low harbor position over the payload bay by astronauts Jim Newman and Jim Voss. This is a clear view of the wake side of the satellite, the, the carousel uh, side where the thin films will be grown in that uh, canister at the bottom of the satellite that looks like the bottom uh, of a triangle. Chemical compounds of predominantly gallium arsi arsenide compounds will be uh, shot into that carousel atom by atom, layer by layer, uh, as uh, thin films are grown uh, over the course of two days of free flight by the Wake Shield once it is deployed by Jim Newman later this morning. This close-up view now showing the uh, wake side of the satellite, uh, the science side of the satellite, uh, where uh, shutters will open uh, back and forth uh, during the course of the thin film growth to allow uh, chemicals to stream through those tubes at the bottom of the picture uh, into a carousel. Those tubes uh, uh, are the uh, carrier panels, if you will, for all of the chemical compounds uh, that will be used uh, to build the thin films, the thin wafer. Uh, like Endeavor with some updates on Wake Shield, we're at step three, page two dash four. We have sent the bus selection pre-flyer channel two, and we are not getting ages resetting and incrementing on flyer SCIU, PDU sensors, and A to D converters. Copy, Andrew Dog. We'll look we into it. We see from our down list that you apparently are getting data. Astronaut Jim Newman now uh, slowly maneuvering the Wake Shield facility 
from uh, directly over the cargo bay to uh, a position over the port side of the uh, sill of the payload bay for the so-called ram cleaning uh, operation. This view from Payload Bay Cameras on Endeavour shows uh, the orbiter approaching uh, sunrise in the west coast of Africa with the uh, wake shield facility hanging at the end of the robot arm over the port side of the payload bay in the so-called ram cleaning position. That has now begun uh, about a two to two and a half hour procedure where atomic oxygen will stream over the wake shield and uh, give it a bath, if you will, to remove any excess contamination which may have built up on the wake shield during its uh, time in the cargo bay. All of the uh, free fly or activation uh, operations will continue at this point. The wake shield itself is called the free flyer. The other component uh, of the wake shield facility is its carrier uh, platform in the cargo bay. This is Mission Control Houston at a mission elapsed time of three days, 15 hours, 54 minutes into the flight of Endeavour. This live picture from uh, the elbow camera on the robot arm of the uh, shuttle Endeavour showing the wake shield facility as it hangs uh, outside the, uh, the port side of the payload bay of the shuttle in the ram cleaning position as it is called. But uh, payload uh, uh, officials and the flight control team want to make sure that there is no further interruption of that stream of telemetry before giving the go to deploy the wake shield facility. This live television picture now from the uh, shuttle Endeavour uh, shows the wake shield hanging at the end of the robot arm over the starboard side of the orbiter as it passes over the northwest portion of Africa. This is uh, in the uh, attitude uh, and the uh, position uh, for the continuing checkout of the attitude determination and control system on the wake shield uh, before uh, it is uh, scheduled to be deployed an hour and a half from now at uh, 610 a.m. Central Time. Okay, thanks. The MMD uh, referred to uh, by astronaut uh, Jim Newman aboard uh, Endeavour is a microgravity measurement device which uh, uh, will be used on the wake shield facility as part of the data collection uh, uh, effort uh, that the wake shield will uh, undertake over the next 50 hours. Mark, uh, could we see Charles in bus A right now? And uh, does that mean you want us to run the start block if it doesn't have a one delta when we get to that point? Jim Voss is uh, coming down to the mid deck. And uh, we have a few PGSCs on this flight, and we've found a use for all of them. Uh, at this time, uh, during the wake shield uh, few days, we'll actually be, and did today, use all of them. We uh, had several set up on the mid-deck. Uh, those two PGSCs, the one on the left is the Goddard uh, payload stuff, and the one on the right is the GPS. The orbiter now has GPS installed, and uh, we're helping those uh, guys learn more about GPS so that we can, when we install GPS into the flight software, our flight controllers will be able to use it uh, the same way they do the KU band now and the tracking stations on the ground. This is uh, just one of the uh, displays that they have. It shows the satellites being tracked and where we are on the Earth. We also have a little world map on there. It uh, shows us where GPS thinks we are, and it agrees quite well with the uh, orbiter uh, state vector that uh, the, the, the FIDO's uh, uplink to us. On this flight, we do have a GPS on the wake shield as well as on the orbiter. Well, we're going to show you a little bit about the rendezvous now. Here's part of the team. It really took all five of us uh, to do this one. In the terminal phase, Cujo's up in the front, uh, reading procedures, 
keeping everybody focused and backing me up. Well, we have uh, Pluto, Pluto and Underdog in the back. Underdog getting ready, of course, to uh, to do the grapple. Pluto running the rendezvous tools, the handheld laser, and uh, generally helping me out. And then Jim uh, played a vital role in trying to document this and in helping me build sunshades in real time to try and keep the sun out of our, sun out of our eyes. This turned out to be real challenging with the beta angle we've got, uh, particularly with the fly around that we had, which caused us to spend a little extra time. So we didn't get as good a video as we would have liked out of these cameras. We were too busy in the windows. Uh, however, uh, we did manage to get the thing aboard, as you saw. And uh, Underdog did just a super job of grappling the thing because we had rates in two axes and we weren't able to dap them to uh, damp them all out. We did get them fairly low for him, uh, and he did a terrific job on the, the capture. And here we now see uh, the final desired end result, the Spartan settling into its cradle uh, to be brought home, hopefully after a successful mission. Thanks. That was a nice tour. Go ahead, Endeavor. Yeah, I kind of delayed my exercise a bit uh, to be with you for Wakefield. Um, it shows an exercise period here on the flight plan, followed by some more Wakefield monitoring, which I'd be happy to do. Um, how would you like me to fit that exercise in? Thanks, Raskin. We'll get back with you. That's a great picture. Okay, well, as you can see, we're uh, going to get a really nice release here. I, Pluto did a super job of letting it go without any tip-off or anything. Uh, we were, you can see he just muscled the uh, dog face out of the out of the window. But it's an absolutely perfect smooth release. Really good job by him. It's a good looking spaceship. Yeah, it is. It's real pretty. Interestingly enough, we had trouble getting laser marks on it at close range off the uh off the uh ram side. I'm sorry, the wake side. Yeah, the, the ram side's a little better. It tends to diffuse the laser instead of reflecting it back on that really smooth surface. This is one area where the real thing sure beats the simulator all the heck, although the behavior was exactly as the simulator predicted. Uh, it sure was a lot easier to see.